Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Anil Joshi. Welcome you to my series Iconological and Temple Architecture Perspectives. Today's lecture is regarding history and in that particularly we are going to study which were the dynasties of the Maharashtra and in that context we are going to see which are the dynasties of all India also. There is a different video covering dynasties of the South India. So that is not covered in this. In this we are going to covering only that of the Maharashtra and those who has influenced the Maharashtra. So they were not basically from Maharashtra neither that was the only their region. But they were involving or they were ruling Maharashtra at that region. So let's go get going to the topic. Now why it is important is the development of temple architecture has many stages and out of that it has come from many regions. It is not the single place or not the single uh, school of thought which has developed all these things. It is a merging of the different ideas, keeping in center a basic principle of the temple, how it should be. So it is marvelous to know how the different varieties were developed. That also because of only one thing, principle was same, but everybody has adapted the styles of the otherwise visible to them and otherwise they liked it so they implemented in their architecture but in the context there were certain changes so for that reason we should know history we should know the architectural patterns iconology and other social aspects in that dynasty so that we'll know the development and will that will help us to understand more in detail what is there really when we are seeing at it now the history of Maharashtra can be divided into following periods. The first one is the early history. Now early history of the great state includes a short history of uh, few names which you are going to give. It is not possible to give all the names of detailed histories but we are going to give which were important from temple architecture point of view. So let's come to that. So kingdoms which have been established in the land of Maharashtra that etymologically divides them from world Marathi meaning the great chariots drivers that is the uh, Rathas the people who are master in uh, driving the uh, Rathas or chariots or the Sarathis from that the name is derived because they had the great warriors who were masters in this sa Sarathya. So the name Maharashtra first appeared in the records of the Chinese traveler Hun Sen in his 7th century inscriptions. The early inhabitants of Maharashtra consist of great fighters and epic names of the state has come from them. And these were actually it was a Dandakaranya means a dense jungle and there are a lot of uh, tribes who were ruling it so uh, basically this was dominated by these people those who were masters in having war techniques staying in the Dandakaranya the basically includes Marathwada and Vidarva in the earlier histories now once the Chalukyas and South Indian people came then they started exploiting remaining part of Maharashtra the region has been under the influence we, which was constantly with wars and change of the dynasties, stabilization, different different people has conquered it but all of them has contributed towards a rich heritage of this uh, Maharashtra. These were Vakatakas, Rashtrakotas, Chalukyas and Yadavas and for a couple of years it was uh, Mughals and then for many years it was a dynasty of Marathas who ruled right from Vijayanagara up to the Delhi. They had the largest span. So they were the rulers of the Maharashtra and they had conquered almost 80% of the India. Now let us talk something about the Islamic influence. Just like any other rulers there was considerable amount of Islamic influence on the history of Maharashtra also as that of the other states of the India. The first Islamic invasion which reached the south of the Narmada Liuhar made by the Khilji. 
So Alauddin Khilji was the first person to cross the Narmada and come towards this Dandakaranya region. It was a dense forest. Now Alauddin Khilji invaded the Deccan region in the year 1296. Before that, there was no Muslims who has ruled his state. He defeated the last Hindu king of the Yadavas at Devgiri Fort, and he started ruling from there for a couple of years. they had their capital as devgiri also which in detail we covered in our videos over the devgiri and aurangabad the invaded north pattern of the country and made which uh, which was under the influence of mughals they made delhi as their capital that was the capital ever since babar has invaded the other followed the train and extend their kingdom further south so we are coming to history of uh, maharashtra step by step let's go further and find out the details of it after the khilji dynasty the next among the islamic invaders to influence the state was made by the mohammed bin tughlaq so khilji and tughlaq together ruled this area for couple of years their map their details and the years we are going to see again when we will be seeing the maps now the tughlaq dynasty region till 1347 and he extended empire till madurai that is in tamil nadu he also conquered vijayanagar and hosra that we are going to see when we have or we have seen other in our other videos which covers the south indian history after the disintegration of the tughlaq dynasty Bahmani Sultanate of the Bishpur came into power. The region was under the Bahmani Sultanate for more than 150 years. So, Yadavas replaced by Tughlaq and then by the Bahmani still then we are come now. The Maharashtra was ruled by Maurya Empire earlier that was in 3rd centuries and it is important because of the cave structures. in maharashtra around 230 bce maharashtra came under the rules of satwahana dynasty which ruled it for the next 400 years so satwahana is important because long time he has ruled for 400 years the rules of satwahana was followed by that of western satraps then gupta empire and gujarat parthiharas basically they are from gujarat and rajasthan but they also had a certain part of maharashtra also which we are going to see in a map after couple of minutes in same lecture then wakatakas kadambas then chalukya empire and rashtrakuta dynasties the and also western chalukyas followed by yadavas were the subsequent dynasties in the maharashtra the buddhist ajanta caves in present day samaji nagar display influence from the satwahana and wakatakas so also they are seen from the mauryan time the caves were possibly excavated during this period that is what the inscription says the information has come from the inscriptions which they have found and from that they could find out in which era these were developed The Chalukya dynasty ruled the region from the 6th to the 8th century CE, and the two prominent rulers were Pulakeshi II. We have seen this when we have studied Badami. In Badami history, we have seen Pulakeshi how brave he was. We have seen how his dynasty was, and that all links are below, or you will available get it available on my website. He defeated the North Indian Emperor Harsha and the Vikramaditya. Two, who defeated the Arab invaders in the eighth century. The Rashtrakuta dynasty ruled Maharashtra from the eighth to tenth century. The Arab traveler Suleiman Mehri describes rulers of the Rashtrakuta dynasty. That is the Amogha Varsha. Amogha Varsha was one of the king, and he thought, he said, he was the strongest king. of that era in the world so that was his opinion that the strongest king was existing in this area 
the Shilahara dynasty began as the vassalas of the Rashtrakuta dynasty, which ruled the Deccan plateau between the 8th and 10th centuries. From the early 11th century to 12th century, the Deccan plateau, which includes a significant part of Marsh, also is dominated by Western Chalukya Empire and the Chola Empire for very small time. Very small time. Several battles were fought between the Western Chalukya Empire and the Chola dynasty. That we have seen more when we are seeing the Badami and the Chalukyas. Their history, their creations and their contributions towards this temple technology. Now they can play to during the region of Raja Raja Chola I, that was a golden period of uh, Chola Empire. The Raja Indra Chola I and Jay Simha, they all were braves and they had lot of part of India as well as abroad. They were not the kings of India, they were kings also extending their empire outside India. Then Someshwara I and Vikramaditya IV were the another kings which added to their dynasties and kingdom. Then important from Maharashtra point of view is the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Empire. The rise of the Maratha power in Maharashtra received impactuous and strength after the great Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj took the region in his hand and founded the Shivaji Empire which lasted long and was known as the Maratha Empire. The early 17th century this was a sudden rise in the power of Marathas who constantly were fighting against the Mughals and Muslim rulers of the Bishpur. Their causes were upheld by the Yadavas who gradually dominated alliance with the Bahamani Sultans due to their inability to defeat kingdom from the Bahamani invasions. There were basically three power centers after Bahamani kingdom was divided into Bishpur, Ahmadnagar and Golconda where the three divisions they were southern kingdoms in the Mughal rulers under the rules of the Emperor Shah Jahan, who was at Delhi. Only once he visited Maharashtra, that was at Devgiri Fort. They constructed palace for him. What is name of it? Is a Chini Palace. That is at Devgiri Fort or Daulatabad Fort. That was constructed for him. He stayed there for certain days, but that much the only only time when he visited Maharashtra. Then Maratha Empire. The beginning of the Maratha Empire in the 17th century AD was the important landmark for the state of Maharashtra. The Maratha Empire was started by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in 1674 by conquering areas from the Bishpur Sultanate. Before the establishment of Maratha Empire, the cause of the natives was put forward through the Yadavas. So Yadavas were doing fairly well. They had Devgiri as their capital and they were strong enough. But when Alauddin Khilji defeated them, there was a Muslim dominant dynasty or it was under the Mughal dynasty which was again pulled back by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj after the Yadavas. But under the leadership of Shivaji Maharaj, the Maratha power gained a new momentum. He showed that he can defeat. He had his different technique of war by which he has defeated them. A Shivaji Maharaj un unchained the Marathas from the rulers of the Muslim to the from the Bishpur. So all the regions which was under Bishpur that was unchained or delinked by Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj and gave back to Maharashtra. The region of the Maratha provided dangers to the Mughal Empire whose territory was continuously attacked by army of Shivaji. They had very peculiar different techniques of the war. Because of that, Mughals were really fed up or they were not just knowing what is to be done or how to counteract these attacks or how to 
defend them in such war technique successful campaign against the mughal included capturing of the port of surat that was also captured by marathas that is by chhatrapati shivaji maharaj 10 years later chhatrapati shivaji crowned himself a king of marathas and he was then started nominating as chhatrapati after his death in 1680 his two sons mainly sambhaji maharaj and rajaram maharaj both of them ruled the maharashtra for a significant or considerable duration so we are seeing the history of marathas right started from chhatrapati shivaji maharaj then it came to his sons the sambhaji maharaj and rajaram maharaj now was the beginning of the peshwa dynasty era peshwa stand for the prime minister they were not the rulers they were not the chhatrapatis they were the employees of uh, satara that was the uh, dynasty of maratha and they were prime ministers of them as the name suggests name peshwa means they were prime ministers or the chief of army then they shifted their uh, capital not exactly capital but they shifted their base from satara to pune and they had it there till their end in the year 1712 balaji vishwanath who was the first peshwa laid the foundation of the peshwa dynasty he was employed of course of the maratha empire the peshwa dynasty prevented the maratha empire from disintegration after the death of shahu in 1712 so they see they saw that the dynasty remain intact the peshwa dynasty took the maratha kingdom to a new height and glory during their period from 1712 to 1804 so these were the years when it was taken almost 80% of india was under their name bajara one made pune as a capital of peshwa rule it is not called as a capital because he was not the king it is called as a base it was a military base during his regime the maratha kingdom had to suffer camelling defeat at the hands of ahmed shah abdali in the third battle of panipat in 1761 the defeat reduced the power of the marathas to some extent to some time but subsequently they regained it and it is a well known fact from the maps that not even a single inch of the maratha dynasty was reduced after losing at panipat in fact they become more powerful so that alauddin khilji ahmed shah abdali or otherwise nobody could defeat them either themselves or by their successors now 600 bc one of the 16 great janapadas by name ashmaka was in maharashtra we are talking way back in the history of before common era that is 600 bc from 250 to 225 it was ruled by satvahanas now we have to recap we have seen lot of things in discrete pattern now if we go to real history of maharashtra in a chronological order we can trace it back to the janapathas that is in 600 bc then came the satvahanas and then came the vakatakas now we are going to see the steps of the maharashtrian history in 550 to 760 it was ruled by chalukyas that is badami chalukyas in 973 rashtrakutas rule came to an end in 1973 to 1180 it was ruled by chalukyas western chalukyas or kalyani chalukyas the capital was at badami 1190 1189 to 1310 ruled by yadavas of devgiri the capital was devgiri they ruled it from 1189 to 1310 now 1296 alauddin khilji he defeated the yadavas and took the devgiri and 
Aurangabad, both were taken one by them and it became a part of the Muslim Sultanate right from the Delhi up to here because they defeated Yadavas and carried away huge amount of loot because Devgiri was at time considered as one of the richest empire. Now 1534 Portuguese occupied Bombay, Mumbai and 1659 Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj captured Surat and again certain part of Kokan and around places around Mumbai so that again become the part of Maratha dynasty now after this is the 1668 that is the british government transferred mumbai to british east india company in 1674 chhatrapati shivaji maharaj became the king of Marathas. Then 1680, the death of Chhatrapati Shivaji came. Then 1689, death of Sambhaji Maharaj came. Then 1707, Shahu I became the Chhatrapati of the Maratha Empire. 1720, Bajirao became one Peshwa. This is in particular we are seeing only history of Maratha Empire. Earlier we have seen that of the entire India and entire the adjacent part of Maharashtra. Now this totally we are seeing here. the history of maratha empire now 1740 was the death of bajirao one who was the greatest warrior and he extended the limits of the maratha empire beyond delhi now marathas captured the town of uh, katak nowadays it is in north pakistan so look at the extension they had maratha empire they had the largest span at that time that was 1756 Then January 61, Marathas lost their third battle with Panipat. But as I told you, not much were losses were either to Marathas. The benefits were neither to Mughals, but the beneficiary was British. Now 1775 to 1782, first Anglo-Maratha war has taken place. Then 1803 to 1805, second Anglo-Maratha war has taken place. 1817 to 1818 third anglo maratha these are the different type of anglo maratha wars which were won or lost or they have settlements and 3rd of june 1818 bajirao 2 surrendered the maratha empire to british and as you know 15th august 1947 was our independence day when india became a free nation now here also we are seeing certain historical aspects of the Kailash Temple. Now, Kailash Temple is notable for its vertical excavation. The carvers started at the top of the stones. So, at top of the hill they started, and they came subsequently down. So, this is the only example in the world where you will find the construction has taken in opposite direction. The traditional method was rigid, and that was for going from down to up except for the cave cuts so this is the marvel or the top or the highest of the cave cut now a medieval marathi legends appear to refer to the construction of the kailasa temple the earliest extent to mention is the legend katha kalpataru by krishna yajnavalki that is ce 1470 to 1535 according to this legion the local king suffered from the severe illness then his queen prayed to the god grishneshwar grishneshwar that is shiva at uh, elapur that is the earlier name for velor for her husband she prayed shiva and she requested that let her husband get back let him get cured from the illnesses and she has taken an oath that once he get well she will make a shiva's temple and she will not touch any food till she sees the kalasha or the topmost portion of the temple so it was a great challenge for the creators that how to make it otherwise the queen will die fasting now after the king was cured she requested him to build a temple so king was told build a temple otherwise i'll go to 
passed until death unless i see a shikhar of the temple but the multiple architects declared that this work is next to impossible to make the shikhar seen and to see queen fasting till that one of the architecture called kokasa kokasa assured king that king would, would be, be able, able to see the shikhar on the top within a week now you will have to accept how the challenge was accepted because he said within one week the queen will see the shikhar now like that you have also seen in vijayanagara when pushkarni was uh, totally constructed before a festival and the engineer took the challenges and they completed here also all the team of construction took the challenge and they did a temple in other way they started excavating a shikhar from the rock and within a week they prepared it and they brought king queen there when queen saw she was very happy her wish was fulfilled and the workers were happy because they were able to finish the shikhar within a week's time enabling queen to give up her fast the temple was named manikeshwar manikeshwar after the queen but ishwara means lord shiva now mk dhawikar postulates that kokasa was indeed the chief architect of the uh, kailasa temple which may have been originally known as the manikeshwar then multiple 11 to 13th century inscriptions from the central india mention architectural born around that time of the kokasa now we'll see maps of india now this is the kushan empire 100 years ad what where what you can see there is a big kushan empire occupying present afghanistan pakistan <coughs> and also south india then you can see also satwahanas in our area of discussion today now here this was a period of domination of gupta that was called known as golden period of the india during this time literature astronomy then myths flourished and they spread out and temples started coming out the huna or hands hands what do you call it we call this hunas empire extended from parts of the eastern iran to the northern western india this approximately is the reason why some believe the hinds or hunas tribe find a mention in mahabharata so they were there for long time whether you call them hinds hunas or hun now here what we are seeing is the indo parthian and indo sinthian era that is around zero that is one ad what you are seeing satwahanas are dominating and here you are seeing kalingas also getting more dominated and they have all the coastal areas their interest was mainly bay of bengal and all the ships coming in that area they were collecting toll from them so kalingas were the real rulers of the east coast of the india except earlier when it was or later it was taken by cholas and they also had their dynasty right from tanjore till ganga so here we are seeing domination of satwahanas now gupta empire at full extent it has uh, extensively invaded india nowadays india pakistan and some part of afghanistan you are seeing wakatakas also but you are not seeing here kalingas then kadambas were also here in that time mainly towards the west coast and there one of the good temple as we all remember is at tamri surla goa mahadeva temple so they constructed that and that stands as their style that is important for our point of view now look here chalukyas dominated now the chalukyas is dominated from 12th century uh, kannada and telugu literature were also flourished during this period and you can see that almost all the region here dominated by that is as far as we are talking of the maharashtra by the chalukya dynasty 
then pallavas were also there pandyas were also there but the dominated by the chalukyas now here now chalukyas chalukyas came to this area they started ruling and mainly most of the devgiri and around devgiri all the monuments were done by yadavas they were great fighters and they had a big interest as far as uh, temples heritage art is concerned now here what we are seeing is the ghori sultanate that we are uh, now not discussing in this lecture topic mainly yadavas are still there you can see yadavas are there then along with that you can see kadambas are reduced to small and most important thing you are seeing hoysa the hoysa has come here and they have replaced where the cholas has reduced to small so cholas reduced to small because of hoysa has again they defeated chola and they also reduced the chalukyas though originally they were from chalukyas the western chalukyas they originated from them but ultimately they defeated them so that is the uh, different part and they continued the tradition of temple that is the most important thing now what we are seeing here is the delhi sultanate important thing is entire maharashtra here was under the influence of delhi sultanate between 1206 to 1526 so here this is important now we are 900 ad the gujar parthi haras dynasty look at the gujar parthi haras they are dominated right from the arabian sea till bay of bengal full half that is mainly madhya pradesh gujarat and part of rajasthan were under their dynasty and so also certain part of maharashtra but though that time maharashtra was dominated by rashtrakutas and the area which we are discussing most of the monuments are in the rashtrakutas now after the collapse of gupta empire a minor line of kalin ruled in magadha down the south kalabras kingdom also crumbled now here you we are seeing chalukyas then uh, gujara parthiyas and kalinga is also there now as you see the year wise sometime you will see them now again maharashtra certain part is ruled by kalashuris then chalukyas where the two dominating dynasties of the maharashtra and certain part was also by kadambas if we consider the development of uh, temple architecture of goa along with maharashtra or with kadambas with that we are coming to the end of this lecture i am thankful for giving me your valuable time i hope you must have understood why the dynasty wise history is important as far as temple architecture is concerned so with that i am dr anil joshi logging off till we meet in next lecture goodbye good luck and take care